Hello, thanks for watching or listening to episode 40 of VIP Boxing's Bell to Bell podcast. Um, look, you know, it's great everyone who watches and downloads. If you can leave us a review on iTunes, it's brilliant, or a nice comment on YouTube. And if you can't leave a nice comment, then don't bother. Nice comments only. I'm Steve Lillis, and with me as usual, my co-host, John Evans. This is our final show before we take a break until about August the 23rd. Um, so we can only bring you the best when it comes to guests. And John came up with his guest this week. He went through his contact book that is just so deep you wouldn't believe. This week, a man who, hope, who, who believes he will and certainly hopes to join Britain's World Champions Club on August the 7th when he challenges Kid Galahad for the IBF featherweight title. It's Jazza Dickens. How are you, Jazza? Thank you for having me, lads. 40 episodes and I've watched every single one. I think we're... <laughs> For boxing fans, it's a great, it's a great little concept that you've got going, and I watched every one of them. So to be on here, it's a pleasure for me. You're a star. Just over two weeks out. How are things, mate? Yeah, brilliant. Very good. Everything's going to plan. Uh, every camp, because I, I write everything down, I've got all the data. I know where I'm at. It's a good place. I'm actually getting better and better. So I'm excited. Yeah, I'll ask you a few little bits about that in a minute, Jazza, but. I can see you've got your pen there with all the colours on like we used to have at school. So uh, are, you taking, uh, are you making serious notes for this episode or is that to write down all your times and your weights and everything? I robbed that off my jaw, so she tried to get it back, but I battered it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't ask, are you okay, John, anyway, mate? I'm good, mate. Yeah, we're in my Costa del Chadda and here we, me and Jazza don't need to be flying over to Spain, do we, Jazza? For hey, homes. Look, mate, Mara, as I said, you, you said before we come on air when you told Jazza, I'm in Spain for warm weather training for the Manchester Marathon, mate. I've got Curtis Gargano, the man who, who, who Jazza believed <laughs> stepdad was robbing me for some reason, but, you know. <laughs> he told uh, me. He said to me. He told, go ahead, tell us the story. I was sitting there after the boxing fight. I just fought, so I'm in the crowd. I think he just fought as well. He was on the undercard. I was on the undercard. We ended up sitting next to each other. <laughs> Him and his mate were sitting there. He said, do you know who I am? My stepdad's Robin Reed. <laughs> and um, he introduced himself. And I thought, he's lying here. He's telling he's what he's taking the piss. Him and, his, and, his, <laughs> and his mate started saying, stop fucking chatting shit. <laughs> and then he said to me, and he's saying to his mate, fuck off, I'm not chatting shit. And they started arguing. And I thought, he's just round the bend here. And that was the first time I ever met him. And he's telling me the story about when, it, when Robin Reed came over to the WBC World title. <laughs> so he must have just rehearsed this lie so many times. The story was great, and um, his mate weren't playing. He had no part in it, and his mate <laughs> ends up getting off. And um, yeah, so I've just found out now that he was lying all them years later. <laughs> it would have had to be his stepdad, wouldn't it? You know, the, the looks didn't come down the family line there, did we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, John, any, anyone who listens knows the Rose de Rigmarole where after three minutes, John gets angry, he rings that bell. So, John, are you going to kick us off this week with round one? Yeah, let's start. Um, you know, Jazz has got his world title fight coming up and your story's been outside the ring, has been told time and time and time again, Jazza, but I'm interested inside because I remember you when you were 1-0, and 2-0, and 3-0, and getting het up at weigh-ins at Oldham Sports Centre and being like a cat on a hot tin roof, you know, you couldn't keep still, could you? You were running half marathons at three o'clock and um, it all came home to you when you fought Lee Wood and you just looked like you'd matured and everything, you know. You knew when it was time to to put it on him at the, at the weigh-in and press conference. With Ryan Walsh, you toned it down a bit. You knew it wouldn't work. You look like you, you're you really capable of following a game plan now. You know what you're good at. You know when to use it. And you've just rounded out from this hyperactive young kid who was desperate to achieve something, but never really got an opportunity. And now your opportunities are coming. It looks like you've you've really grasped what type of fight you are and, and what you have to do to capitalise on these chances now. Yeah, I think, John, maybe I always I always wondered to myself, do I do the same professional too early? Because I was very immature when I turned professional. You know, when you say, like, at the weigh-ins and that, sometimes I look back and I say, borderline disrespectful, you know what I mean? And I didn't understand the concept of the of the old game sort of thing, and definitely not the business. So I think you do mature in life, don't you, with anything that you do. And um, luckily for me, I've st I I've still got my youth and I live a healthy life and I've, I've had the opportunity to sort of come again. But a great coach, got a team behind me now and um, they played a massive part in where they am today. 
John, just on your on your team, um, Jazza, with George and George Vaughan and Derry Matthews, why has it taken, do you think, so long to find a team where you feel, look, I mean, I'm not saying, you know, you've had some good trainers and I'm sure a lot of them, you've got a lot of respect for most of them, but how comes it's taking you this long to find somewhere that's on your doorstep where you feel you're at home? I don't know, I think life just, that's just life. Life happens like that, doesn't it, Steve? And I, I can't say why I'm so lucky. I, I am so lucky, and I'm all so lucky to start at the start of the career. I have with the Stevenson brothers, very lucky to have them in my life. Um, I've learned off them, I've learned off other people, and now I'm learning off Georgie and Teddy. Um, Georgie's really cold, he went home when not to, he knows how to be a fighter because he's so tuned with his fighters. So, um, yeah, every day I get with these people is a blessing because these, these people have been around the block and I get to so I feel as I always start, don't mean to be going on but I was sitting with Georgie Vaughan and Franny Hans and somebody else and they were like all over all of them were like over 65 and I thought this is the privilege of being a champion to be sitting in the company of these people who've got age on me and I was very blessed to be a part of that conversation Yeah, I, th I think that's why with this rematch coming up you'll get a lot of people saying oh you know will it, will it be a repeat of what happened a few years ago but Having known you, Jazza, and followed you through, you're a totally different character and a different fighter. And personally, I think it might just well be a, a completely different result on the night as well, to be honest. But, end of round one. Round two. Um, um, no go for Joe. Um, Joe Joyce fights this weekend in what's a, you know, a good heavyweight fight against Carlos Tackham. Tackham hasn't fought for a, for a long time, like most boxers, but he's coming off a a decent win against Jerry Forrest. Um, you know, Joe's just waiting to be, you know, be elevated to the mandatory position with the WBO. He'll get that after Joshua's fought Usyk. But I'm just wondering, realistically, when is he going to get his world title opportunity? Because the division is so parked up. You know, we're looking, he's 35, and I'm thinking you're looking at another 18 months before he gets, you know, possibly gets a world title fight as, as, as such, you know, or if he gets it, you know, in the first half of next year, it could be where it's fractured and he fights the WBO champ, a WBO contender with Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua, you know, um, fighting for the other belts and he's sort of fighting for a WBO belt and he's parked up and I feel really sorry for Joe. He was hard done by the Olympics 2016. He fought everybody as an amateur um, and for what he's had, 12, 13 fights. There's not a fighter in, the, in around who's had 12, 13 fights with ECV, I don't think, in the heavyweight division. I just feel really sorry for him and I just wonder how you see it panning out for him, fellas. Yeah, go on, Jazza. Yeah, I think um, in this situation, I think he's a, I think he's a really good fighter. I think he's got a good team around him as well, especially as um, his manager Sam is his manager. Yeah, Sam Jones. I met, I met him at the uh, the Mushroom Garden. He seems like a fucking workaholic. He seems like he works hard for him. He's got a good team around him. And in this situation where people let's talk about the belts, there's too many. Belt option. I think I believe in having all the belts because it would be a shame. You should be thirty-five years old, and for a fighter like him to have this this run that he's got going right now and not get a world title shot, it would be it'd be devastating for him, wouldn't it? Yeah, it'd be, it'd be terrible, wouldn't it? Like Steve said, there's no fat on Joe's record, is there? You know, they put him in hard every time. And as keep busy go fights go, Carlos Tackham's a good one, isn't it? You know, he's a yeah. He's for everybody. He's, he's he's a really good gatekeeper, Tackham. But yeah. I'm, I'm, my just worry for Joe is like you just said, Steve, you know, he might end up fighting for a WBO title some point next year. It might be a vacant one and it might be like when Tommy Morrison and Ray Mercer were fighting for that WBO heavyweight title years ago. No one remembers them as a champion, do they? You know, no. they're in the shadow. And maybe Joe's just destined to to always just be in the shadow of these big guys. Yeah, I, I just feel, I, I'm just absolutely, I just feel sorry for him because he, de he deserves so much more and, but, you know, because of the fury and Joshua falling through, fury Wilder falling through, um, and or being delayed, it's, it's just, it just don't look. It's just it just it, it don't look. You know, it it, it just don't look bright for, for him. Uh, round three and um, Jazzy, you want to talk about one of your former opponents, Ryan Walsh? Ryan, yeah, I think for Ryan Walsh, it's been a tough, tough time. It's devastating. Lee Woods just been announced to fight for the world title, hasn't he? Great for Lee Woods. Um, I, I actually fought Lee Woods and he's now fighting for the world title before me when I won the fight. I'm in a position where 
I'm in a position where I'm happy for him. I don't have to be bitter. But boxing can be cruel. And uh, Ryan Walsh, he lost the British title because he went in the Golden Contact tournament because he put his balls on the line. He lost his title. Then Lee Woods fought for it without him having to even defend it. I'm fighting for the world title. And he hasn't even got a business title to defend. I think he's a great fight. I'm sure he's got a great team. I could be saying this. And MTK probably working on something behind the scenes for him. And it'll be announced soon, very soon, or what have you. But I just think that um, due to politics in boxing, a lot of um, great fighters, they, they don't get the opportunities that they deserved. Only just a few months ago, he's ranked number two to WBO. And now no one's even talking about him. You know what? When when you when you mentioned to me uh, on Friday, this was something you wanted to talk about, Jazz. I had a look. Um, J- John's a great encyclopedia like this, so he might be able to answer this. I mean, he's had eight British title fights, six one. He's had one six, drawn one, lost one. The lost was against someone who became a world champion, Lee Selby. Now, how many British champions in the current climate? have had that sort of run at British title level and not got that world title fight, that world title fight. That is so harsh on Ryan Walsh. And as you say, I'm not taking anything away from Lee Wood when he fights Zoo Can in a couple of weeks. Good luck to him. You get the opportunity in this sport, you take him. You make your own luck. But to have had eight British title fights and seen off six of them in style pretty much and not get, and not get that world title fight is pretty unfortunate. Yeah, he, he was a he was the boss, wasn't he? You know, he he, he was the man, right? Yeah. As well, way he he wasn't just scraping by; he was beating people one after the other. And again, I mentioned the nineties last time. In the nineties on Sky, Ryan would have had world title fights at home, wouldn't he? With those crowds, you know, he sells yeah. a ticket. Can you imagine some of the nights they would have had in the past? And again, what like Joe? You know, why is it not happening for Ryan? You know, he gives his all. He's exciting. He's a winning fighter. He should have had a chance by now. And Maybe Jazza wins, Lee Wood wins. We've got Josh Warrington wins his rematch. We've got three top guys. Maybe Ryan gets a shot. Yeah, I'd like to see him. Um, I would like to see him. Um, he's a really good fighter. and um, I do, He's a lovely lad and he's got a, he's a family man. He's, he's, he's that bell coming shit. <laughs> 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 yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but I hope Ryan stays on it because he's a really good fighter. And best of luck to Lee Woods too. Yeah, yeah. Mike, Michael's making a comeback as well, isn't he? After a, a long spell out, I believe Michael, the undefeated Walsh brothers, making a comeback yeah. again. Yeah, every win by knockout. It does yeah. Um, right, these light middleweights. Yeah. Um, God, what a list! You know, you got Charlo, Castaño, Lubin. Um, off the top of my head, here, Harrison, Rosario. There's, there's too many to list. Um, over the last few years, they've had it's gone under the radar, but they've had a round robin of like they've all fought each other. And it culminated last weekend in a, a terrific fight, wasn't it, for the undisputed light middleweight title ended in a draw. Um, that's exactly what we want from these fighters, you know. Maybe these light middleweights haven't got the highest profiles and to earn the money we want, they've had to fight each other. But can you imagine if all the divisions in boxing were like this? I think Charlo's for the top five guys in his division. Yeah, yes, yeah, so, so, yeah. You know, and... <laughs> The belts have all come together and we got a big fight. Can you imagine that in what much better health the sport would be if all the divisions were ran along this way? I know Jazza would absolutely love it, you know, if all the top guys fought each other. But I just want to say, well done to the light middleweights. You know, they've all put the balls on the line. They've all put the reputations on the line. And they've all mixed in and really tried to find out who's the best. Yeah, you know what? And it's just something about the fight. that I haven't seen the fight the weekend, so I don't know how, what the right decision was and all that. I know there's stick over the scorecard, but so many people whose opinion I respect in boxing, you should say, you, you say, John, how great the fights have been, you know, and how, you know, how good these fighters are. But so many people have said the quality of the fight on Saturday night. And I think that, that that's something, you know, I know... The, the, the scorecard of it, Nelson Vasquez has overlooked it. But I think, you know, from a lot of great people, as you know, good boxing judges are saying the quality of the fight. And I think that that's as important as the belts that, that you know, when you, you're getting high quality boxing between these guys, when everything's on the line. Yeah, I think it's a, I do think it's a great division. My favorite is um, the banana Rosario. Because yeah. his, his coach is the guy, uh, Chilo Perez, who I trained with in, when I went out to Miami. So I was really good for him. He was the underdog that night. And I think with um, good divisions, you're only one, you're only one um, prima donna away from ruining the old show, aren't you? Or sometimes it comes along like this and you, and all the lads, they, they want to be there for um, 
to make a legacy, Andy, and t- right now we're lucky to be th- to have them people. And um, even even in the on a business team, we've got a great team of me coming through there. So in boxing, it doesn't last long, does it? I think it's good to strike while the iron's hot. So hopefully, hopefully they, they keep on doing what they're doing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, can't forget. Sim- Sorry, jo- John. Oh God, Steve, what a good point, though. Yeah, you only need one prima donna to ruin a division. Yeah, and. You know, there's Tim Tazu as well. Um, we can't forget him because he's getting a lot of publicity. What I was going to ask you, just as I say, because you've seen the fight the weekend, can you know, will Charlo improve? In, will Charlo be the one that's got more improvement in him than Castano? He said, Well, I'll, I'll, we'll carry on that one afterwards because that's the three minutes. Round five, um, fight camp. Um, I know someone out of the three of us who's looking forward to fight camp more than anybody, and he's only got two weeks to wait. Um, obviously, because we're shutting down for a few weeks, I thought we had to look at fight camp tonight. And I wonder what fights you, you're, you guys are looking forward to. Obviously, we've got the world title fight with Jazza that, you know, you know, you know, you're in, and everyone's. I think most people are rooting for your Jazza, but I think with Eddie, he, he had to really start with a big card. We were really exciting fight, pretty much like Frank Warren did with Box Nation back in 2011. He started with Bellu cleverly won to get people into the channel early. You know, nothing that show that Eddie's got on the 31st of the seventh. You know, Kanzu against Lee Wood. Ben against Granadus, you know, Danny Garcia, I think, is the only man to stop him. And Tommy McCarthy against uh, Billum Smith. I think that card is, 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 a, is a standout. I think it's absolutely fantastic. And I just wanted your guys' opinions on what fights are standing out for you at Fight Camp. Yeah, well, you, you just named two for me there, you know. Um, I, I think Kanzu and Lee Wood will be good for how long it lasts, just given the styles. Um, but McCarthy and Billum Smith, you know, there's that little bit of needle between the Minter and Cruiserweight. I, you know what we think of Cruiserweight yeah, fights. No, never yeah. disappoint, do they? Um, so, yeah, I, I think Tommy McCarthy and Chris Billum Smith could be the one that really comes through. Tommy can be a little bit lazy at times, a little bit quiet, but if there's one fight to bring bring the best out of him, I think it's going to be this one. Yeah, I like that one, the, the McCarthy... Bill and Smith one, I think that'll be a really good fight. There's a bit of needle there as well, isn't he? Yeah. Um, seeing that they're, they're both confident, the both of them don't know that. Um, there's got to be a loser. Do you know what I mean? Both of them in their heads, they're gonna win. Um, and with the Lee Wood one, that stole the show, really, didn't it? Who's, who's the headline? Ben is it? Is Ben? Uh, ben I, think, I think Ben was, but whether you, I, I guess you got to say Kanzu Lee Wood is the for TV purposes, should we say? Because the zone, uh, yeah. you know, their first night in British boxing. They want that, you know, they at least they can say we've got a world title fight, even though it's only for the regular world title. I think, um, Leo Santa Cruz has got that, um, yeah. super title, although he hasn't fought at the weights for about more than two years. Yeah, wow. So I think that, um, it's, it's a bit like, um, Skype, the, the, the people who watch it all the time, even this new guy. You know, they like to watch, the, they tune in to see these matching fighters, don't they? And when there's a new fighter, they're a bit sceptical. Ah, oh, just your Bill or what have you. So, but I think that'd be a great fight with the, the Lee Wood. Can do. Lee Wood can do. <laughs> yeah, you wonder what Josh, well, you know, going back to that fight, you must have wonder Josh Warrington was just, oh, he's given up his title, he's got beat. And now a guy who wasn't even be, he'd be in all respect, I, mean, I don't want to sound like we're knocking Lee here at all. A guy he would be looking at as an opponent has now got the fight. Round six, final round. Jazza Dickens, you want to speak about VIP boxing? VIP boxing, the, the, the current lay of the, the, the TV dates now with Matthew moving on. Sky years ago gave the TV dates all to Matthew. When I turned professional, I think there was about five or six top promoters who all got a slice of the slice of the pie and I was with um, Ricky, Ricky Hatton I was for the first few years he got a few dates per year I was on the televised dates but um, he was a few I was managed by Steve Woods at the time there was a few promoters smaller promoters who had really good cards but he just weren't getting the money to, to be on and then all, all the all the shows were given to my team I think my team's done a great job but now my team have moved on so I just hope that all these promoters especially VIP and Steve Woods get their chance at um uh not not just their fighters getting on the shows and their fighters headline people's bills for them. But I hope Steve Woods personally has been through it for years and years. And people like Steve Woods get their opportunity 
you know what I mean? There's like um, there's Jeffries in the northeast. There's people like Steve Woods everywhere, really, isn't he? Or um, locally, but I just hope Steve Woods he gets his chance and he can um, not just as fighters, but Steve Woods gets his chance and he can be headline and bills and his VIPs. Everyone on Sky Sports can see what VIP. Um, yeah, can can you imagine some of the shows what he could have put on in the past? You know, when yeah. he had full stables, like when he had. Well, at times, God, Steve had Warrington, Flanagan, Coyle, all in his stable yeah. at the same time. You know, it, it goes under the radar because they fight on other people's shows and they're dotted around. But if you put them all together, God, that, that's as good as anything you could put on, isn't it? I'm, I'm not sure Steve's probably got a better idea than me on how it's going to work and how all these dates are going to be split up. But you've got to think if, if dates are going to be given out to different promoters or if they are going to work with people, VIP is certainly going to be one of the major players, aren't they? You would have thought. Yeah. You hope so. I understand the first Sky show is going to be 28th of August, which is quite a big night for British Box. I think Frank Warren's announced the show in Birmingham that night. Um, you got that, that, that night. I think there might be some other boxing that weekend, I'm hearing. Um, you know, I think they've got these people boxer in Ben Shalom's um, group. And I hope that, you know, I hope Ben sees it. Right enough, they, you know, because don't forget that they need the fighters that they go around and work with these promoters. You mentioned Phil Jeffries, you know, you've got you know, Phil Jeffries, you've got Steve Wood, you know, in, in Manchester, you've got guys like you know, Mo Price, Steve Goodwin do great shows in London. I hope these guys are, are involved and Scott and Sky actually gives some exposure to, to these guys that have been doing the, the hard yard, hard yards for a year. Um, I have my doubts how they're going to do it, but let, let's hope I'm, I'm proved, I'm pretty, I'm proven wrong. I mean, the, the only name I heard who's going to go on Sky so far, I don't know if you guys have heard any names, is Chris Eubank. How true that is, I've no idea. Hey, yeah, Jasper, what, was, what was your first ever appearance? You know, when you were fighting on Ricky shows in them four rounders, what can you remember the first time you fought on TV? Yeah, I fought in Jerry when he was about 108 years old. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and the wind, I was missing my punches and then the wind was knocking them over. <laughs> <laughs> I was a youth worker in, in, the, in the Shrewsbury Youth Club at the time with the kids. And on the telly, it was, um, what was the boxing channel they had on every week? The Sky one? Ringside. Ringside, that was it. And I come on it, and I couldn't believe it. I started getting all hot, hot sweats. <laughs> and, and I was just in myself, and I was watching myself on ringside. I couldn't believe it. And I, I, I wanted to tell people, but then I, didn't, and I couldn't take my eyes off the screen. But that was my first experience, yeah. But my first ever fight was on in the Olympia on a Steve Woods bill. Steve Woods looked, looked after me, bringing me through. And um, I'm not, I don't forget where I am at with MTK, but um, I would have also loved to give Steve Woods a world title. I would. Um, it's not what, it was tough for me leaving Steve Woods, but I felt like I had to, to move on, not because of Steve Woods, who's not wrong with him, but for me to move on because Steve Woods likes, where, likes the Steve Woods way of getting the opportunities from Sky. I felt like I had to move on, do you know what I mean? So I hope that people can um, he can get the rewards that he deserves because yeah. he should have got them from me. Just talking TV demands, what's been the media demand for you from the zone and Metro Media over the last few weeks, Jazz? Have you had to do a lot of work? Well I fought for for the world title last time, Steve, I realised how much how much yeah. um, pressure that the media can can put on you. So ever since then I always tried to get I always tried to make myself available to the to the media. And um, I, I tried to make it a part of my career. I included it because I thought when I'm back at the top, I wanna I wanna make that so uh, normal to me that it doesn't affect me. So now in the situation, it doesn't affect me. But you see the likes of Mayweather, don't you? Who's surrounded by the media all the time. And when it's time for a fight night, he throws it on his opponents, and his opponents don't want to deal with this media pressure. So it's a tool that you can use if you know how to use it. What are you what are you gonna do, Jazz? Are you gonna shut off for a couple of weeks leading up to the fight? Are you gonna just mean? shut off and concentrate on the fight I'll for the last couple of weeks? Yeah, well I do I do be saying I've got one last and then two weeks before I have my last last towards the end of this week, which will be two weeks before the fight, I'll have my last sparring and then we start tapering. But we keep it one day on, one day off. We yeah. include the rest of the rest a little bit more then when we get as fit as we can and and we rest as we like it like it. <laughs> the best time I was um, 
I was mopping up. I don't. I'm not. I'm not the type of guy. You know I mean? but with that much energy where you're resting, you used to train it twice, twice a day. <laughs> you know, I'm just like mopping the floor and stuff like that. I'm looking for things to do. You know what I mean? Just, just ready to fight. But I haven't seen my kids now. And by the time fight night comes, I want them to be on the next level this time. And I'm just going to sacrifice everything I can because it will, will be worth it. It's my, it's my child who I'm seeing. Child inside me, I always wants to be yes. So I want to see if we can, you know. Yeah, brilliant. Well, Jazza, um, thanks very much for joining us before we take a little break for the for the summer. Um, really kind of you to afford us your time just two and a half weeks out before you fight. All we can do, you know, is, is wish you all the best for fight night. And um, you know, may you know, as John says, I think it, it could be a different result than what happened the first time that you've met. You know, you've matured, you both sparred since, so you know, you you're both you're both a lot wiser, but maybe you're like, you know, you are you you are that different person from now from since then. John, thanks for joining us and doing the last 40 episodes with me. And uh, I'll see you next month. And thank everybody else who tunes in every week and watches like Jazza Dickens. <laughs> you will do. And I'll just say the heavy breathing that's been going on throughout. It's not me. It's this thing here, this bulldog. He's not. He's struggling a little <laughs> bit. But he, so, uh, I, uh, heavy breathing's not me. It's been lied with a bulldog. I, I, thought, I thought he had a pig. <laughs> well, I was going to be. I thought, you know, you're on the way home from work. You've been driving through through Oldham, gone for a coffee, and uh, found, you know, as a single man, you found an attractive lady, and she'd come round your house, and she was panting away, waiting for you to finish the podcast, John. Well, I, I, I think he's, I think he's very attractive. Ah, oh, Lloyd, Lloyd's a beauty, mate. I will tell you what, <laughs> look, Lloyd's been a regular. Oh, you know what? For it shows how much Lloyd means you. Every, all forty weeks, mate. He has been at your side that we've done this forty weeks. That takes some doing, and and Lloyd doesn't leave your side. But you know, Lloyd's going to get a few, to a few Monday nights, and we record this to to his, to get you to himself for a few weeks, John. Named after Lloyd Honeygun as well. Really, hey, okay. what a good fighter he was. You talk of fighters who perhaps don't get the credit they deserve. There's another one. What a great yeah. fighter. Lads, thank you so much for your two service towards boxing. Uh, without you, the likes of myself, and we'll never be where we are. So thank you so much, lads. Thanks. Well, no need to say that, but thank you. I'll take the thanks, yeah. you know, but you don't need to say that. It's very kind yeah, I think, of you. I think you've done all right on your own, Jazza. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, it's two lads. I can fight seven nights a week, couldn't I? And if people like you don't get get it out there, then no one knows. So thank you. You take care, Jazza. Thanks again, John, for all your help the last um, Thanks, last few months as my co-pilot. And we'll be back 23rd of August. There'll be a lot to look forward to that weekend, I think. See you later. Brilliant. Bye, uh, boys. For all boxing, info, news, and latest interviews, amateur and pro, across and off, click subscribe VIP boxing promotions also Twitter Instagram and Facebook